Okay, it's time to do the first job which is called racking the beer. So basically this uh, fermenter has been up here for about a week and a half, two weeks and uh, it's fermented out I would have thought. And now what I'm going to do is rack it into this clean fermenter with the racking bits and bobs and then it's going to sit there for I guess about uh, another week or so and then I'm going to cold crash it for a fortnight. So let's get to there we go. Rack and roll. Now unfortunately the, uh, the tube is not quite long enough to reach the bottom which is not a good thing. You really could do with it a little bit longer. But I've never had any problems so uh, I'll carry on like this for now I think. Carry on like this for now, I think. Now, what I've got here are some replacement O rings for the tops if required. I've got some replacement O rings for the uh, stalks that go into the keg. So, uh, I'll show you exactly what I do to, to check everything out. So, for a start, I'm going to release the pressure because this is what I've had bearing before. So, it's already released, so just take that off, get in there, and inside I've got some old beer. So I'm just going to boil the kettle up and uh, whack it in there and give it a good old clean out. Just give that a soap out of there. And put some boiling water in there. And what this is going to do is just give it a good clean out and uh, sanitise it a little bit. So I'll colour up with that on to boil. Put the lid back in. Try to level it off the best you can because if you don't get a proper seal you're going to burn yourself. So I'll put that out of the way for a minute. And uh, Try not to grab hold of the, of the metal because you'll hurt yourself, you'll burn yourself because it does get hot in there. So just give it a whiz round for a few minutes and then let off the uh, gas and get rid of the old beer. Watching that you don't burn your fingers at the same time. So that's what I like to do. Closely followed by filling the thing up again with warmest water. And then I'll put another this round. Do this a couple of times with warm water. So boil your kettle again and then pop that in there. Wipe the lid on making sure that it's got a good seal, like I say boiling water, you don't want anything to burn you. Right, once you've done that for a few minutes, get a tap dispenser if you've got one and pop it on the out one and Just empty it through the uh, through the tube with boiling water. So what this is doing is is cleaning the, the stainless steel pipe that goes to the bottom of the uh, of the keg. You can also use this to clean your pipes out as well, the beer lines if you like. This is just a spare one that I use for cleaning out. So that's emptied out now. 
So I let all the air out, undo that. And the next step is to unscrew the two pipes. So that's what I'm going to be doing next. So let's take these out, just a old bed spanner if you've got one, or any other spanner that will fit. So just carefully undo these. Obviously make sure there's no pressure in there, you can actually take it off. So that's the, uh, the grommet that uh, fixes in the top. I don't think it's called a grommet, but and then just gently push the pipe out. And what I shall do is check on that rubber. In fact, I normally, because I've got loads of them, I normally uh, replace them every time I do this. But you can just inspect it and make sure it's okay. But for me, I take it off and whack it in the bin. So I'll leave that in there for now. And the same goes for this one. Now, I normally, on the threads, when I replace them, just put this white, I think it's called TPF uh, tape on there. Let's just take that, take that out, take the rubber off, because I want to replace those. And I'll have a look at these, they don't look too bad. The rubber's on there, uh, I may just leave on because they don't look too bad. So next I'm going to get some PTF tape and uh, wrap it around there. It should be pretty clean inside now because I've got rid of you know, the crap. And uh, what I'm going to do is PTF tape and then I'm going to clean all these off for a start. These should be pretty clean anyway and uh, I'll show you what we do next. Right, the next stage is to get some of this stuff. It's uh, used by plumbers and it's used for threads, PTFE tape. Now what I'm going to do, instead of trying to wrap it round from the reel, I'm just going to cut about three inches of the tape off, wobbling a bit, and then just carefully wrap it round and then you'll find it goes on a lot better than trying to get it out of a roll. Try and keep it level to the, uh, the threads. Try and go in the direction that uh, the thread screws on as well and then it won't undo in theory. Now obviously there's a, an in and out on, on the keg itself and if you have a look you should be able to see where it says in and out. So obviously the, the long tube is the out tube, so we'll put that one in next. Just have a look at the, the end to make sure there's no rough edges or anything. And then I'm going to put a new rubber on. Now when I put a new O-ring, as I call it, I always put some of this uh, what I call sexy gel. Uh, you, you guess what it is, but basically it's uh, food safe. So I'll get a bit of, of the gel, just like that. I'll be coming out and just rub it on the on the top, and just whilst it's on your fingers, just bung some more gel on it. That's all you have to do. Just rub it. You don't want loads on, just a little bit and then slide it down the, uh, the pipe. There we go. And you want it a nice fit onto the end. So remember that is the out pipe so we'll slide it down there. Now you notice that that's got a bend on it so that it goes to the centre down at the bottom 
and there's a little indent in the bottom of the keg. So I'll push that down. There we go. The I don't know what you call these. The uh, oh, I'll put a little note what they're called anyway. But there is a difference between these. There's the line in, which is for the CO2, which has always got like little cutouts or whatever. And there's the line out, which is no real cutouts. So there's a there's a big difference. So this one is going to be the line out. So I'm going to be putting that one on. Now. I'd, you can get those clips out if you want, but I generally don't like to do that because they're a right sod sometimes to go in. I've got the shakes lot. So what I'm going to do is just place it on there, being careful just to hand tighten it for a start. Don't have to go mad. So just tighten that up. It's not too tight. So I'm holding the spanner about a third from the end so that I don't get any leverage on it. So just nip it. So that's that one nipped. Next one is the CO2 in. So let's get that one on. So again, just a little bit of the gel on the end of your finger. Don't need to be a lot. Lasts forever this gel does. After inspecting to make sure that there's no rough edges there that's likely to ruin the, the, the O ring. So we'll slot that in. And again, it's the, uh, it's the air in, so we've got the cutouts. And just screw it on. If you get it cross threaded, you're going to be in an old heap of, of trouble, so don't force anything. This should go on nice and easy with your fingers for a start. And then just gently tighten her up. Like I say, you don't need any force. Okay, we've come to the time now where this uh, has been cold crashing for about two weeks. Really cold temperature, as cold as I can get it. I haven't actually uh, found out what it is because I'm not dipped my thermometer into it, but I siphon it out and in we go. Now, already it's quite clear as you can see. I wish these bloody bends weren't in this pipe. 